welcome to the Ember Hut Game Dev Podcast. I'm Lex and this is Seabiscuit. Today we're going to be talking all about Steam. I'm sorry, so, S- St- Seabiscuit? I thought you wanted to go by Seabiscuit. Since when? I don't know. But today we're talking about Steam. So, Libby, okay. you know Steam, that great platform on the PC where you buy all your games from. I do indeed. So, I'm going to talk about how to actually get your game up on Steam and what would you like to add to the conversation? I'm going to talk about setting up your steam store page well doesn't that sound lovely right let's get started then so you've got your game it's all ready to rock and roll and you want to make a few quid with it so the first thing you're going to want to do to get your game on steam is go to partner.steamgames.com register fill out all the forms don't take too long make sure you read it all there are a few terms and conditions a few things basically be a good boy or girl and just play by the rules once you're all in, you're going to pay $100 to register a new game site. Now, this $100 is basically just to cut back Presumably on... that's American dollars. Yeah, sorry. Yes. It's not Australian dollars. It is American dollars. You're absolutely right. Nice pickup there, Libby. That was good. Thank I just you wanted for to the clarify. Clarif- no, 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 yeah. Absolutely clarification is key. So, we're paying 100 USD to register a new game slot on Steam. This game slot system is designed basically to limit trash going on this platform, making it only serious people put the games there. It was introduced to replace the old Steam Greenlight system, where if you're an old boy like me, you might remember this. This So old. Look, there's no need for that, all right? I'm I'm approaching 40. I'm not happy about it as it is. You you stop. No. So Steam Greenlight, if you can remember, or back in the long, long ago, was a system where people would put up their games, promote them, and then everybody would vote on on this game if they liked it or not. It led to a load of controversy and bad behavior basically people would be bribing people to vote for them and all sorts which led to games being put on the platform which wasn't really ideal so steam did away with all of that brought in this sort of slot system steam (laughs) direct i believe is the actual term for it but uh it's worked out really nice in my opinion so we've paid our hundred dollars you hundred dollars usd of course Mm -hmm. we've paid our hundred dollars we've registered with steam the next thing you're gonna do is download the steam sdk the steam software development kit now what this is going to do is it's going to give you all the documents you need, all the guides, all the integration, all the APIs, everything you should possibly need. But along with that, it's going to give you a really cool little uh, GUI system for uploading your game to what they call Steam Pipe. That's now, a great definition, GUI. Did you like it? Yeah, graphical user interface. Oh. Those people in the trade would actually know that. Term, <laughs> yes, maybe. but I'm not in the trade. I'm useless. Well, you are <laughs> You are great. Right. Useless is such a strong term for you. You're all right. You've, you've got your use. You're fantastic at making tea. That's so patronising. <laughs> so patronising. So back to what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted. You don't drink the tea. Back to what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted. You've got your Steam SDK. You've downloaded it. You've got your little GUI system for uploading your Steam. It's really, really simple, this GUI. All you do, you put in your Steam partner details. So it's your partner details, not your normal details. <laughs> You enter your Steam Games ID along the top, and then you select your folder where your game is. That's it. You click upload, and what it'll do is it will verify your game. It does basic checks, make sure you've not got anything naughty running in any viruses, anything like that, and it will upload it for you to this package ID. Does that take a while, or is it fairly quick? It depends entirely on the size of your game. Okay. So like, if you've got a little tiny game, super quick. But what I will say, what I was just about to say, when you upload updates and future versions of your mm-hmm. game, it checks the file, it scans it all again to make sure it's all good, and then it just uploads the updates and the changes that you've made. Okay, that's quite handy then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it speeds like, things up. Yeah, that's exactly it. So if you've got like a super big game, it will just upload the updates and the changes and get them up there, making it really, really nice and clean. And Yeah, yeah it's, it's good. That's a good it, idea. It's, it really is good. So once that's done, once you've got your game uploaded, it's then up to you to see w- what you want to do next, really. So there's a few things you can do in this, this back end. One of the main things you're going to want to do once you've got your game uploaded is you're going to want to start giving out game keys, either to your other fellow devs, to yourself for your platform. If you're running a Kickstarter or another marketing campaign, you want to give it out to people that are there and your general beta keys. So this these keys work for the end product and the beta product. You select what they're for. And to get your keys, all you're going to need to do for this is go to the key section, select a category and request an amount. As long as you're not asking for a stupid amount, like if you ask for 10,000 keys, Steam's going to have a problem with that because at the end of the day, you are kind of costing them money because they're not directly selling. But if you just ask for a few or you justify why you need so many, then they will just give you the keys in next to no time and you get a little CSV file containing them all and that's it. Download them. It's really, really quite simple. And uh, 
And that's one key per person, isn't it? Yeah, the keys can only be used once. I mean, you've redeemed a game on Steam before. <laughs> have, you go to yes. the thing, you pipe in the key and off you go, and then that key is then done. Yeah. You can revoke keys if you want to, and they've got a really good system for doing all of that. So if your keys do get stolen or misused or or, or you just need to expire them, you can just go there and wipe them off. So if you're going to use keys, I would really recommend having a spreadsheet, knowing where they've gone, when they were used, dates, etc., just so you can keep track and you've got a really simple method of wiping them clean should you need to. So... That's your keys. Next up, we've got achievements. Everybody loves an achievement. Everyone loves an achievement. It could not be easy to set up your achievement. So as far as Steam is concerned, you set up a name of an achievement, you set up an icon for the achievement, and you set up some description text. That is it. That's all it cares about. It will then give you a little unique achievement ID, which you program into your game. And using the Steam SDK that we've implemented at this point, you trigger the achievement to to be fired and to, to be rewarded when the when the requirements are met okay so you then literally put it into the code of your game that's exactly it so you can control exactly when to do it so you can have everything from you know you took part in a beta test to you killed ten thousand rat man you know it's it's entirely up to you it's whatever you want and this is why you can get some of those really fancy sort of achievements as well you can tie them all about do whatever you want it's really really simple and the steam documentation is fantastic for this too now, along with your achievements, you can also sign up for things like the Steam Next Fest and any other promotional events they've got, because sometimes they'll run a horror event or a racing event or a simulation event. They're really, really good with this. And Steam, believe it or not, they do want to actually help you sell your game. They do, actually. That's something that I was going to touch on later, but I'll mention it now, is yeah, that please. with the Next Fest and all those sort of things, really great way to promote your game and get people wish listing it, even if it's not ready yet. Oh, wish list. I tell you, you're going to talk about wish list later on. Not so much. It was just going to be a brief mention. but Well, just in case you don't cover it, I will say one thing. Just, I'm changing the topic slightly, but here's a little tip for you. If you can get your game <laughs> wishlisted as much as humanly possible, if you can get around seven to 800 wishlists before like a Steam Next Fest or a promotional event, you're going to get pushed higher on the rankings and it's really going to help you. So try to get as many wishlists as you possibly can. But I'm sure we can cover that in a bit more depth in another video. But Yeah, absolutely. Try to bear in mind, if nothing else you take away from wishlists, try to get around 700. And that will really, really help promote you in, in the algorithm of Steam. So these promotional events, what will happen is Steam will actually come to you on your dashboard of your partner section and it'll say, hey, we've got this event coming up. We've got this next fest coming up. Do you want to take part? You click opt in. Fill out a super simple survey just to check your game's eligible. And that's it. Then you're in. It's, yeah. it's really, really simple. They'll guide you on what sort of promotional material to make yeah. as well. But it's it's really, really great. And you can set up live streams and all sorts. It's fantastic. They are really useful tools and they do four a year. Um, you can only do one of the next fest per year, but there are four opportunities to pick which one is most appropriate for when you're releasing your game. Am I stepping on your toes, say? No, this? you're fine. Have you got all this no. planned for it, haven't it? No, this is planned for a future video. Oh, ooh, look <laughs> you thinking ahead. I know. Oh, it's not like me planning five minutes before we start. Right, anyway, so the last thing you can do, which you're going to guess this one if you haven't already, you can set your game up for early access. So early access, we all know what it is. It's your game ready to be played, but not ready to be released yet. And early access can be a great way to get exposure for your game and raise funds. Just make sure your game is ready for early access and make sure it's right for you. Because despite the fact that you know it's early access, the people buying it have clicked it knowing it's early access, they still expect the game to be pretty ready. You know, they don't expect it to be 100% finished, but they expect there to be no major bugs like crashing every five seconds and mostly just to be fine tuning in sort of mm. extra content. So if you're gonna do it in early access, make sure it's actually ready for early access. And it really can be good for building a budding community. Because if you can get people talking about your game, they are your best marketing you can get. And the secret to doing that is regular updates. Get your game updated as regular and as often as you can. People will love it, people will thank you. And there'll also be a lot more charitable as well for bigger bugs. So just be ready that launching an early access isn't a one and done. It's actually gonna make your life a little bit harder because you need to support it even heavier than you've been doing before. And that is essentially the basics for getting your game on Steam. What do you think about that, Libby? That well, seems fairly straightforward from that Yeah, I mean, there are, there are extra bits you can cover. Yeah. Like there are trading cards and, and all manner of other things, you know, DRM protection and, and all this lot. <coughs> I'm not going to go into that in this video because I think they're a little bit niche, but they are all there and it is all explained quite easily. If it's something that you're interested in us covering, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on trading cards or whatever you like, really. So, yeah, that's getting your game up on Steam. Very well described. Did, did you well enjoy done. that? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Shall I talk about the store page now? You can. You yeah. can have a chat. 
Fantastic. So obviously I will be talking about the store page, which is what your potential players are going to see when they look for your game. Now, on average, the user will only skim through your page for about 45 seconds before deciding if they want to buy it. Yeah, I, I've heard this. And I think if we're all honest, we do, don't we? You yeah. go there, you have a click look, you, you don't really read it and you just no. jump in through, aren't you? Yeah. People literally just skim it. So you want to make sure you're getting your game across really clearly, like really clearly. And what a, a mistake a lot of people make is it is not your game. No, okay? it's not it, your game. They're no. on your Steam page, not for your game. It's your Steam page. It is a tool for selling your game, but it is not your game. You don't need your store page to be... Um, selling was the wrong word there. You don't need your store page to be telling the story of your game. You don't need it to take your players through a journey. What that... do you mean by this? I mean, you're confusing me a little bit. What, what do you mean? <laughs> so it is a tool for your game. It is not your actual game. It is a tool for selling your game. Okay. So telling the people that are going to your page that, you know, this is the story, this is why you need to play it, this is the fantastic layout with all the wonderful graphics isn't actually going to sell it very well. Okay, so if we're not putting all that there, then what should we put there? Well, let's get into it, shall we? Let's, please. I'm, so I'm first things confused, first, actually, but right. you need a kick-ass capsule image. Now, this can be your game logo. It can be a screenshot. It can be an image of the main character. Just to jump in, the capsule image, that's the one in the top right corner, the little it tiny is, yes. one, isn't it? Under, yeah, where the little the, image. Yeah. It's the one that's going to come up in the list when you people are searching. So like the big browse search. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so... Um, it should include your, your game title, but that image can be pretty much anything to do with your game, but you really want it to stand out. Now, Steam, obviously, as we all know, uses quite muted blue tones for all their colour scheme. So any colours that are going to really pop on that. So bright greens, purples work really well. Do you know what? Sorry, I didn't interrupt you. I'm just thinking about captured images that I've seen recently. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of like low res games are really in fashion now, like really popular, yeah. like pixel arty ones, like old sort of NES style games. And I've what's seen, great is they use neon colours, which really pop. I was going to say, and I've also seen them hire an artist to draw those, like, those really kind of retro 80 cool images. Yeah, like, and they work really well. Shovel Knight. I don't know if you've ever played Shovel Knight. <laughs> I it, have not. It's as great as you can imagine. Basically, <laughs> you bounce around on a shovel. Done Fantastic. Out. I'll show you another time. This is what they've done. I mean, my God, their capture image is fantastic. So check yeah. out Shovel Knight and see how they've done it. It's really, really good. I'm going to have to show you Shovel Knight now, don't I? <laughs> yeah. So when we're done recording, I will be looking at <laughs> Shovel Knight. But yeah, my point exactly. So you want something that's going to really stand out. Obviously, it needs to be appropriate for your game. If you're doing a horror, having bright neon color colors probably isn't going to be the right thing for you. But why <laughs> just are you like, just a horror game with bright neon colors? I mean, know? it might be. It depends what the horror game's based on. But Could be pretty horrific. It's, it's unlikely that you're going to have bright neon colors. So it still needs to work for your game, but it needs to really stand out. Are we happy with that? I'm happy with that, yeah. yes. No bright pinks and blues, all right. Well, no, you can use bright pinks and blues. Oh, That's you're, fine. You're confusing me. Bright colours work really well. Really well. Use now, bright colours. Gotcha. Yeah. Below your capsule image, it's going to be a short description. Only it's not going to be a description at all. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. What are you on today? It's fantastic. So, instead of a description because people don't really read it they don't again you don't want to be telling the story of your game it needs to be a really simple hook for your game so a lot of people focus on like a key aspect of it rather than you know a lengthy description so do you mean because you, you got me confused so. okay so if we're talking about the original super mario brothers right you're yep. saying rather than you know Mar be mario venture into the mushroom kingdom save princess toadstool from yep, too long you're saying be Mario, bounce on Goombas, jump on turtles, smash up Bowser. And... Still too long, but yes, more along those lines. Oh, okay. In fact, you know, big verbs and nouns are fantastic in these sort of things. Well, there we have it. Big yeah. verbs and nouns. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, it sounds ridiculous. Well, I wouldn't say that. But... Now, Lex. Libby. When it comes to your store page, you would assume the trailer... Sorry, you're not Libby, you're Seabiscuit. Por apologies. Seabiscuit, yes. <laughs> Why am I Seabiscuit? <sighs> You literally don't have an answer, do you? It's just my name of the day. Um, fantastic, thanks. So anyway, Lex. You're welcome. Yes. Would you assume that your trailer is very important and a big selling point on your store page? Well, surely it's got to be, right? Mm, nope, you're wrong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert, really, really wrong. 
So most people will not watch your trailer. Well, that's, at all. that's fair. That That is fair. Yep. So... Yep. You're actually agreeing with me. This doesn't happen often. No, I, I am agreeing with you because you're right. I mean, you, you go to a Steam page, you don't really watch the trailer, do you? Not until no. the game sold you. You watch the trailer to reinforce the fact that you already like the game. So... Yeah. So actually, the trailer isn't that big a deal. So you kind of want to stay away from long cinematic storytelling and focus on gameplay. when Because people will click through it, but not actually watch it. So big title cards and gameplay work really well. Because what people tend to do rather than watching the trailer is go through your screenshots. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. So like, do you mean you're really going to want to like hook the person, aren't you? For example, yeah. if you're selling, oh, I don't know, a new Fortnite expansion i mean i know we're not talking indie here but you'd want them building something bigger something more grandiose you'd want you know their, their thanos coming out for the portal to show you something that really grabs you right yeah. away and says look play my game look at how good this is we've got buildings we've got thanos we've got that's bright, exactly it blue so you... colors right here <laughs> you and colors you, you meet, leave me alone but that's exactly what you want you want the real key aspects of what makes your great game amazing and you want screenshots of that because they're going to tell you the user a lot more. So pretty screenshots are nice, but they don't tell the players anything about your game. They so, want to know what your game does. So you kind of want the menus then. You want the UI yeah. as well as just, yeah. So you don't, you don't want non-stop action. No. Is that what you're saying? And I tell you want like a variance of images A variance well. of images. Yeah. But it needs to be telling people what your game is. So they're not trying to figure out what sort of game it is. They can see from the screenshots and clicking through your video exactly what it is okay so it's kind of like running a, a kickstarter promotion then in that case you want people to get it straight away yeah because they're only here for 45 seconds <laughs> so that's honestly the average they're on your that is the four. average 45 seconds and the thing is that's when people have already looked at your capsule image on like a search page and gone hey that looks all right i or i'm already interested in this game but i'm still only going to stay for 45 seconds how generous <laughs> i know Every it's a quick world we live in now yeah yeah now, after that, obviously, the next big section about this game. Yeah? Uh, please tell me we're actually talking about the game now. Nope. Oh. <laughs> no, in this section, actually, what you want is more of a trailer, surprisingly. Oh, what? <laughs> so you're still going to stick with the gameplay aspects and UI and things like that, but you're going to do it in a series of GIFs and images. What you really, really don't want to do is fill this with huge amounts of text because no one is going to read it. So you want things at a quick glance that they can just scroll down and see. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be in sequence, ideally, of you know a few second gifts in particular, but throw in a few images. If you do have text, it needs to be short, snappy, to the point, and ideally accompanying the gifts and images. Okay. So stay away from big chunky text because yeah no one's gonna read it nobody wants all. a chunky boy there no right not okay. in the slightest well there we are i know so the trailer is in the about this so, game no description in the description <laughs> no about the game in the about game the trailer goes in the about game yeah <laughs> and gameplay goes in the description yeah pretty much it's all backwards isn't does, it does the company name go in the company name slot at least sure why not well I'll allow that one <laughs> Now, the last major part of the store page is going to be the tags, though. And the most important tags need to be the difficulty level, which obviously makes sense, what type of game it is. So is it a platformer? Is it a first-person shooter? And whether it's 2D or 3D. However, for Steam's algorithms to work effectively, you need to have 20 tags. 20? Yeah. So we will go into that more in a detail in another video because that is time-consuming, I'm not going to lie. Right, fair enough, fair enough. But yeah, 20 tags, and it's really important what tags you use. So go and look at games that are similar to yours that have already been successful and see what tags they're using. Because at the bottom of your store page, there's going to be recommended titles. And they're all based on what tags are on your game and their game. So it really is a good idea to copy your competitors in this instance. Yes, in this instance, if there is a competitor that of yours that is doing really well, use their tags because... If they're doing well and then, you know, say we're looking at this person's page and at the bottom it recommends the game that we've already played that we really liked and is really successful, we're going to go, well, hey, we'll probably like this game as well then. 
Wow, that's actually really useful. So you can get marketing off of their, their, their yeah. marketing efforts. Then. Wow, that's really so, good. So yeah, it's really important what tags you have. And like I said, you want 20 tags. 20. Exactly 20. No exactly more, 20. No less. <laughs> right, okay. 20 is what you need to make the algorithms work behind the scenes properly. Isn't 20 the max, actually, now that I think about it? Do you know what? I don't know, actually. But I know that you need 20. Fair enough. <laughs> I just, you just know, know. <laughs> I just know I need 20. <laughs> Right, okay. But my research has shown 20 tags is what you need for the algorithms. Right. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, <What's> so... Your... <laughs> oh, you mock me all the time. I'm not but... mocking you. I just want to know why 20. But if you say you've like done said, the research, I yeah, believe you. Um, we'll go into detail in another video. Yeah, okay? sure. I think we should. I think we should, because yeah. there's actually a lot you can do in the behind the scenes stuff that can really help boost um, your listing and things as well and get it targeted to the right kind of people that are going to be interested in your game. There's actually quite a lot you can do behind the scenes. So that will probably be quite an in-depth video later yeah. on. Cool. So hopefully with this information, you have enough insight to make your store page look as appealing as possible to players. And yeah, as always, if you have any questions, drop it in the comments and we'll get back to you. So the gist of it, lots of images. Yep. Don't worry too much about the trailer. Yep. Don't bother putting, if it says about us or description, just do the opposite. Yeah, pretty much. You're basically just putting everything where it shouldn't be. Brilliant. I mean, it really does sound like what you've said. It's just, don't worry about what the sections say. Just fill it in with gameplay. Yeah. Images. The biggest thing is definitely up. gameplay, UI, so that the person looking at your page knows exactly what your game is. They want to figure out exactly what genre it is, what the gameplay is going yeah. to be like immediately, yeah? Yeah. They don't really care what the story is at this point. They want to know that it's going to be a sort of game, style, whatever, that they enjoy playing. Mm. Mm. Well, there we go. So we've got a few extra videos to make, a couple of follow-up videos, most definitely going to come soon on these bits. If you do have any particular areas you want us to talk about or cover, let us know in a comment below. Mm -hmm. And let's move on. Now, Libby, I hope you've got a nice Kickstarter for me this week. Do you want to show me what you've got? No. Oh, <laughs> well, that's promising. Right, <laughs> let's take a look. Okay, Libby, you didn't seem too keen, so let's have a look. What have you got for us this week on the Kickstarter? Okay, so this week we have Scars of Honor. I do like dragons. Is it another one of those games where you raise a dragon from an leg? No. Oh. Not in the slightest. So, as you can see from here, community-driven free-to-play MMORPG. MMORPG on Kickstarter. That's not ringing any bells at all. No, they do actually mention that later on, though. Oh, do they? They do. But first, let's just... I'm not going to play the full hey, video. Be before oh, you play okay. it, yeah. you say it's not going to ring any bells. I can't help but notice for an MMO, they only want 158 grand, which might sound like a lot, but for an MMO, ooh, it's not a lot of money. Yeah, we'll get to that later. All right. Yeah, okay. there, there is a reason. But um, yeah, I'm not going to play the whole video because it's really, really long, okay. which I'm just... Mm, yeah, I don't like that. But I'm going to play some of it for you. Okay. Okay. So I believe the graphics have been updated since this early feat scenario. So some might be better than others. So this is a mobile game, is it? It's going to be PC and mobile. Beast Burst Entertainment. So this Scars is their first is game. A free to play, 3D stylized and game we're where we get believe a all from him the now, in game mechanics should be truly connected so that it provides big a sword. fun It's a long video, 5 experience. minutes 15. We all remember which I'm going to go ahead and say right now, too long. Yeah, way, way too, too long. long. Way too long. Now I have watched the full video. It is annoying. Oh, that's controversial. You got to justify that. So this poor man Put his heart and soul into a video he only did. for you to and turn actually, and say, it's annoying. So they have a team of over 60 as well. 60? Over 60 for this game, They're which is obviously quite unusual. They're going to people with 158 grand? Yeah, see, that was my concern until I got further wow. down the page, which I'll get to in a minute. But the reason I don't like this video is because, for one, he talks quite a bit now, which is, it's just a bit boring what he talks about, if I'm honest. But then they basically have YouTube podcasts for half the video and it's like that doesn't need to be in your initial trailer at all i wouldn't put so, it in the trailer yeah, no I'd, I'd link to it in the page yeah but... absolutely link to it in the page and they do link other youtube videos further down it doesn't need to be in the trailer it is an absolute waste of time that like if i wasn't looking at this page to talk about it there's no way i would have watched that whole video not a chance i will say it did seem to take a while to get off of it 
get started. Yeah, I mean, it was quite a slow cinematic as well. Yeah, in terms of video, I don't rate it. However... Can you move the video on a little bit? That ping's backside is a little bit threatening. Yeah, okay, there we go. That's much nicer. So, you know, just clicking through, but look, you've got just people talking about it, and that's for a lot of it. They, You know, it's different. Oh, I recognise it, and that was Josh Strife Hayes. This guy? Yeah, I know him. Well, there you go. He talks about it, she talks about it, and... I mean, that's fine. Obviously, you want people to talk about your game, but don't put it in this. Mm. Five it's minutes is a very long time. Very long. A... Very long. So I can see it's got 27 days left. How long has it been running for? Do you, do you know? Do you know when it started? Do you know what? I actually don't know. And I don't know where you can find that out, if I'm honest. I swear it says somewhere. Don't worry about it. Move on. Forget but, I said anything. Yeah. Okay. So at the moment, obviously, 212 backers. It's got £14,773 of 158 526 which i think is two hundred thousand american dollars okay is, is what they're aiming for i think if you hover over the little uh dollar sign yeah oh yes there you go. There we that go. was a good guess libby cool. it's like i looked at it earlier it is isn't it <laughs> now i will say they've put a lot of effort into this kickstarter and there is a lot in this kickstarter which yeah as we know from having spoken about Kickstarter many times, you don't want to put huge amounts of non-value information. Yeah, you need to get to the point. Yeah. Now, as you can see down the side, there is a lot of different topics that they talk about. The breeding system, that could be controversial. Could be a little bit, couldn't we'll, it? We'll skip that one, maybe. But, yeah, so, but what is good, they contain lots of gifts. Their text sections are not massive some places maybe they're a little bit long and a bit wordy for what they're trying to get across stars of honor is an enchanting 3d fantasy mmorpg currently in development where immersive gameplay meets stylized visuals set to launch as a completely free to play game that worries me scars of honor proudly oh you know it's going to have subscription based pricing and microtransactions well, that's what worries me if i'm honest because let's be honest all games are going that well, way you've got to make money somehow but yeah yeah, I, I personally, I hate the microtransaction. Free from any pay-to-win elements. Mm. Don't believe that for a second, because so many games advertise that. Mm. Mm. And it's like, mm, only if you actually buy the additional packages. And... Do they talk at all about the... Uh, Not hugely, no. Right. Mm. But So, as I said, links to other videos, which is fine. It's giving the person looking at the page the option to go and look at it if they want to. Yeah. More gifts. I mean... This I really don't like, and I think this might just be a me thing. Do you think it's a bit presumptuous? Yeah, because they actually include this pledge now quite a few times. Well, I definitely agree. You should break up the page with it and remind people to pledge. I, I get that, but you think it's just a bit too soon, do you? A bit too soon, and I mean, they're using it to break up this big chunk of text, mm. which, I don't know, to me, it just feels unnecessary. It feels unnecessary. What happens Unne if you click it? Just click it. So it's doing a whole page refresh, is it? Yeah. I'm oh, too. and it's taking you directly to that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Right. So clicking the pledge now button breaks up the user experience, takes them away from the page, which my concern would be if they go to that page and think, mm, you know what, maybe not. They're just going to close the tab, aren't they? You've broken yeah. up the experience. So yeah, you probably want to leave it to a point where they really are committed a bit further down. Yeah, because at the moment, we're, you know, we're, we've, this is all that's been, mm. which isn't a lot. And like I said, I feel like they're just, they're partly using it to break up this big chunk of text. And I think you're better off maybe doing that with the image, another GIF. And again, I mean, these are the more wordier sections that I feel are a bit unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quite nice that they're saying, hey, we're doing these languages and we're going to look at doing more. But again... I get the localization point. Is that really a key selling point you want at the top of your page? Not really. I don't think so. I mean, it's I something mean, it's to, to include. Have. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be up here at all. Mm. So then we go on to the world. They've got like the nice world map, which I think is a yeah, nice addition. Um tells us a bit about the story. When are they actually going to tell us about gameplay? They don't. Because that's what I want to know. I want to know about gameplay. I want to know about yeah. these microtransactions. I want to know... I don't care about your races. I don't care what your world looks like. I want to know I what quite the like game... this race breakdown, though. Right. I don't, but this I, is just personal. No, I agree. I, I completely agree, right? It does look lovely, but it shouldn't be here. Tell me what the game is. Is it World of Warcraft-like? Is it like Age of Conan-like? What's it actually like? What type of MMO is this? Is it point and click? I mean, they say it's on Android, so... Yeah, see, what, that's what my it? sort of concern with it is how... If you were to have World of Warcraft on a mobile... You'd have to cut it right down. You'd have to cut it right down, and it wouldn't have the same experience. Mm. So if it's something like that, which is what I get the feeling it's going to be like, 
th there's a lot of things that look like it. it you know, look, certainly look like it could be. Yeah. I, I wouldn't call it a World of Warcraft clone just yet, because let's be fair, World of Warcraft did set the style for you know, MMOs yeah, these days, did. so everything is expected to look like it. So I wouldn't judge it negatively for that. What's this? So because that's a totally different style of what we've seen so far. It is, and it doesn't really explain very well. Yeah, you know, it's your capital's town hall for a construction permit. What? Is, but what? I, it doesn't really specify if this is blueprints. If, if this is, I, I mean, you know, you're going to each of these places. Is this a map? Is it? I, I'd guess it's player housing essentially, but it. it I, I don't yeah. really know. It doesn't really explain it. Shame. It's a nice graphic, to be fair. It is a nice graphic, but yeah, it doesn't really explain it. And then we've got you know professions. See, so just just go back up to their wording a second. To the beginning of professions. In Scars of Honor, we've moved away from the tedious grinds of impractical professions and pointless craftable items. Instead, our focus lies on professions that are not only enjoyable, but also vital for other players. Well, that's an opinion. It is. And what if, you know, you like the traditional style? Like, for me, I personally prefer... Let's talk about World of Warcraft a bit more. I prefer the older crafting style than the newer one. So for me, you might call it impractical and tedious. For me, that was actually quite an enjoyable experience. It has to be said, back in the days when I played World of Warcraft... I thoroughly enjoyed herb gathering. Yeah, you had a bit of a problem, didn't you? I did have a problem. Mm. A little bit of an ad addict with that. Well, I wouldn't say that. But, uh... <laughs> but I, I actually quite liked that. Yeah. It was a more relaxing mm. side of the game. So they're kind of alienating people there by saying things like that. Uh, you could say that, I suppose. Mm. And also, you know, meaningful pr professions. I mean, all the professions in other MMOs still have a point. Yeah. You know, they are meaningful in some way. We aim to interlink professions. For example, miners rely on pickaxes pick crafted by blacksmiths. Well, that, that... I mean, that's fairly standard across MMOs. Yeah, but MMOs. for something as basic as a as a mining pick, you, you know, you'd yeah. think you could just buy that. You're being See, now I'm concerned because do you literally need everybody for everything? I mean... Ah. They are heavily on the community-based side of it. Yeah, but forcing interaction is never good. It should be a good thing. It should be a benefit. I agree yeah. with that, but forcing it, mandating people to do it? And I do feel like... A lot of what they're saying here is unnecessary for this Kickstarter page. I mean, again, nice gifts, breaking it up. It's not too texty. But they've still not actually told us what the gameplay is. But they've is. still not told us what the gameplay is, no. They've said a lot of lovely words. And now we're on to weird looking dog things. What's what's that? Breeding so, system. Breeding system. Mounts often get overlooked. I would say they never get overlooked, actually. I would say they're a very big part of it. And lots of people spend a lot of time collecting them. Yeah. Again, that's a very big generalization. I'm trying to think of all the MMOs I've played. Mounts have always played a really big part. Really big part, you know, especially for traveling. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when you're going across a huge, great distance, you're not just going to walk the entire time, are you? Well, you'd hope not. I really hope not. I'm looking at you and you're clearly reading this section, aren't well, you? Well, I'm trying to understand <laughs> it. I'm looking for where it's actually going to tell me what is in the game. My, my concern is at the moment, this is really, and I, I shouldn't say this, but it's reading like one of those MMOs that promises everything on Kickstarter. And oh, here we go, the MMO trap on Kickstarter once again, promising everything. Yeah. I, I, it's not filling me with confidence that they can deliver. I mean, the artwork is lovely, but there are some really talented artists out there that can knock this up. Yeah. Where's the damn gameplay? So we're now on player versus environment. So we've still got a big long list to go. But again, it's not. Do they talk about raiding? I mean, this is Dungeons uh, and Raids. So yeah, Dungeons say? and Raids. Outleveled content, irrelevant zones, get back to weak item drops. Knowing these issues helped us fix our designs. So what's the fix? They're not just for endgame. They're accessible while leveling with friends, which I'm pretty sure dungeons generally are with... That's usually how they work. Yeah. I mean, they're saying there's a problem. Fair enough. You could certainly argue there is a problem. But what's the solution? Uh, well, there's no solution here. There's no solution here. Oh, no. See, I, I don't want it to sound... So secrets being a... and puzzles for progression... I mean, I'd quite actually like to see more puzzle aspect maybe put into That's dungeons. Fair. That's I'm, I just want to jump back. I don't want it to seem like we're just, you know, talking down about this because it does look nice. It's clear they put in a lot of effort. I just feel they're so close to getting it right. They're just missing the mark somewhat. Like, yeah. tell me your fix. Tell me your solution. Show me your gameplay. How does breeding work? How do enchantments work? How do professions work? You've told me you fixed it, but you haven't shown me. Yeah, it is very much like that. And again, you know, even... Well, let, sorry. Sorry. I what? don't mean to interrupt. Let's look at this. Exploring dungeons, conquering bosses, and unlocking the mysteries isn't just an adventure. It's a key to acquiring new spells for your arsenal. Why you start with the basics, true strength demands effort. Gear up, gather your allies, and let's embark on this journey together. Like, what does that mean? Do, does that mean my character doesn't start with all their spells? Does it mean I'm mandated to do content? What if I don't want to do it? Uh, 
I, but then I might be totally misunderstanding. They, they, they're not explaining it very well. No. And that's my biggest concern is they're not really explaining what the game is. I mean, there's loads of pretty content. But as I've said in podcast when we were talking about Steam, pretty doesn't sell. It doesn't tell me anything. No, I mean, I personally couldn't back this unless there's something that comes along later on, simply because I don't really know what I'm backing. It yeah. just seems like a lot of promises. And there is so much here, so much. And yet it's, at no point does it really tell me what the game is. In that trailer, that very long trailer that you've yeah. watched. Oh, that gameplay. Is that gameplay? Uh, so this is part of the PvP. Right. Wow, that really does look like wow, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, there, I'm pretty there sure I saw a Hearthstone a second ago, but anyway, let's not go there. There, there are definitely similarities. And I suspect that a lot of the original team were probably WoW players at one point and don't like how it's turned. Oh, who hasn't played WoW then, let's be fair. It was a good game. It was a good game, yeah. <laughs> Emphasis on was. It was, yeah. <laughs> 20 years ago, Libby, we played that game. 20 years ago. We're so old. Oh, so old. That really makes me feel old, actually. Yeah, yeah, you really are old. You're older than me. Uh, yeah. Substantially, it's thank you very it's much. debatable. Well, I mean, according to some people, I'm 48, so. No. Look damn good for my age. Again, pledge now. And then we're going to talk about See, that's rewards. an appropriate place. For yeah, that look is how more far appropriate. Down we are, yeah. And then we talk about the rewards. Now, as I said earlier in this, there is a team of over 60 people for this game. And they have a make a pledge without a reward. And I just sort of feel like if you're going to have a team that big, you could at least, you know, throw a digital wallpaper. Yeah, something like that would be nice. Wouldn't it? Because it's really no effort for them. So what are they all doing then? I mean, let's just jump ahead a little bit, unless it's something okay. to, ski, to the team section. I mean, I will say, I think their reward tiers are actually quite good. Oh, okay. So that is something I do want to say. They... See, what's a Watcher subscription? Because it says that we get 12 months of it under the barrel, uh, $99 yes. so one. it doesn't explain. <laughs> I, I was thinking, but... have we skipped past it? <laughs> just just control F it a second. See if you can find it, because uh, maybe we're not doing it justice. Maybe the problem is us. So, Watcher. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's further down. Oh, right. Fair enough. So what, what is that? Access our current subscriptions from Munich 24-7 entry to a dedicated PTR server. Okay, so you get to play on a test run. Yep. Wonderful. Here you'll be the first six months new mechanics, bug fixes and improvements before they hit live session. So it's not pay to win, but you get to see everything before everybody else. Yeah. Plus enjoy perks like unlimited access to all our current and future store items. Okay. Personalized cosmetics and the ability well, straight to up name future in store items. It's not pay to win, but there will be future well, store items. Well, the fact items. that you're giving people you know, advanced access to stuff to learn mechanics. I mean, even states out there is, yeah. Although it does concern me as well that they're calling it a subscription. Yeah. Because it's a free game, but there are clearly subscriptions. But I will say there is a lot included in the more expensive... Well, for two and a half grand, I'd bloody yes. well hope so. Those ones a little bit excessive, but they've got physical items as well. You know, T-shirt, you get an epic mount, that sort of thing. There is... They've thought through what they're putting in them. And as the section we were just on... They are essentially putting terms and conditions and explaining them. So for some of these, you get to design things, but these rewards will come with some restrictions. Of course, of course. But at least they are saying that. Yeah, they definitely need to do that. Otherwise, that could end quite badly. Yes. And then, again, pledge now. But I think that's probably an appropriate place. Yeah, definitely. Um, I quite like this, that they've added this in, because not many people do. And it's shipping costs for the physical items and they've also said that actually they cannot ship to everywhere and they've included a list of restricted countries wonderful so if i back my two and a half grand and then they want me to pay an extra five dollars for shipping okay cool just just making that clear wonderful but that generally happens anyway or i find it does they've then got their stretch goals again something i quite like on this one is that they haven't just done monetary stretch goals they've done number of backer stretch goals but I quite like that. Okay. It's certainly something new. Yeah, it's yeah. something you don't see every it's, time. It's something a little bit different. And then we've got mystery ones, which just annoys me, if I'm honest. You don't like that? No, I'm not a fan. But no. I, I think a lot of people do like that as well, though. Yeah. That's adding fair. that mystery in it. I mean, they're obviously, you know, they're very set silhouettes of things. So they, or if it's, they know what's going in there, but keeping it a mystery. So why Kickstarter? They are basically going with the approach of they're well aware that 200,000 isn't going to be enough for an MMO RPG. They are admitting that. And for them, it's 
if they have a successful campaign, it opens more doors for them in terms of investors and um, building a community, that kind of thing. So if I give them my money yeah. and they're successful, then they might be able to raise the rest of the money to actually make the game. Yeah. I would not list that if I was them. It is concerning, isn't it? Very concerning, because that really is what they're saying. I, I know I am somewhat saying in a negative way, but that that, uh, that really is what they're saying. Give us the money. If we're successful, we're then going to try to get a bigger investment and hopefully make the game with it. Yeah. And as we know, to earn over 100,000 puts you in the top 4% of Kickstarters ever. Yeah. So they've actually given themselves a really high target to be successful. Well, let's move on to the team. Let's see what all these 60 odd people are doing. So this is their team. So we've got 2D artists, we've got 3D artists, game designers, marketing, content creators, sound engineering, etc. I wonder how they're able to afford their staff at the moment. That's oh, we'll get to that. People. Oh, okay. Because I had that concern. So especially when I got to this bit and I was like, well, hang on a minute. That's a lot of people to pay That's wages to. Because as much as everyone who does game development has a passion for it, it doesn't pay the bills to begin with. No, we've still got bills to pay, yeah. Yeah. So we've then got photos. That's nice. Adds a bit of uh, human touch to it. Yeah, Absolutely. human touch. That's quite nice. And then we've got the timeline, which is where things get a bit interesting. So in 2020, November, they had their first round of investments of $250,000. Oh, they've already had investment. They've already had investment back in 2020. Okay. And then in 2021, in September, they had a second round of investments of $2.3 million. Now, they don't say at any point where these investments have come from which i would actually be really interested to know so they've had two and a half million already so they've yeah they've already had two and a half million us dollars of investment when is this game coming out and it's not set to be released until 2026 so there's still another two years of development that they're expecting their rate of burn must be through the roof wow if i was an investor that they'd come to me they said right we've already had two and a half million We've raised another 100,000 plus on Kickstarter. We just need another, what, presumably another two and a half million? Yeah, it's it's really quite concerning that actually they've already had such a substantial amount of money. And they've talked about the fact that the reason they're doing this Kickstarter is so that they can get more investments. Yeah, you know, not really from Kickstarter itself, but using that yeah, as, a, as, a, as a stepping stone to get bigger investors. I appreciate the honesty and you should always be honest with these things, but that does concern me significantly. It does concern me a what, lot. What have they put in risks? Maybe they've laid this out. They've been, <laughs> no. they've been really honest so far. Uh, so we've got some more videos, which fine. And their risks and challenges are a bit vague. So I wasn't particularly happy with their risks and challenges because they are very... Well, let's have a look. Competitive okay. landscape. The gaming industry is highly competitive. While we believe in scars of honest uniqueness, gaming visibility during our Kickstarter launch is in such a market poses a challenge. Yes, it does. Development realities. Game development, especially for ambitious projects like ours, is inherently unpredictable. Expect unexpected hurdles might arise, potentially affecting timelines. We promise transparent communication, ensuring you are updated on the development journey. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, that's all you can say. We're going to update you. Yeah. Adaption. Our vision for Scars of Honest is ambitious. However, the nature of game development may lead to adjustments. We might need to adapt features or modify aspects to ensure the game is overall success. Again, fair enough, as long as they're open and honest about it. Mm -hmm. Your support means a lot to us. Despite potential challenges, we are fueled by our, our expertise and your trust. Thank you for being part of the team. All very generic, out the box. Yeah, well, I mean, at least they're being open and they do say in there they're going to give us updates which is a good thing updates and there's a big focus on honesty in that yeah you you do need to be honest but i feel like they're not really summarizing their own personal risks in this they're very generic risks that are very appropriate for all yeah. games ever basically yeah that's fair enough so yeah I would have liked a bit more personalization to their actual development risks. Yeah, I think that's fair. All in all, I think they're just slightly off the mark. Yeah. Otherwise, this is a really good Kickstarter page. They're just slightly off the mark. They, they've clearly got the problems. They know what the problems are. They're just not telling us what solution they've come up with, which would be nice no, to know. And there is a fair bit of opinionated stuff against other MMOs, which I think is quite a dangerous territory. It is for a developer. I mean, we've all yeah. got our opinions, but... You know, when you're acting professional, you need to give us a solution. Don't just tell us the problem. Yeah. I mean, overall, I think the game definitely has potential. They've obviously got a big team to develop it. They've had a lot of investment already. So clearly someone somewhere believes in this project, yeah. which is great. But I am definitely concerned that it's still two years away from release, despite all that investment. Mm. And they want this Kickstarter and, to be successful so they can hopefully get yeah, some more. Yeah, and they, they want this 
Kickstarter to get more investors as well. So to me, that is quite concerning that it may not happen or it's going to take a very long time. Well, we shall see. Thank you for showing us this one, Libby, and uh, let's see what we can find for next week. Yeah. Bye-bye. Goodbye.